our pilgrimage through the Holy Land begins at Haifa, a picturesque port on the Mediterranean. Here we land to journey forth to holy places whose names are revered throughout the world. We gaze down at Haifa from Mount Carmel, the traditional site of Elijah's sacrifice. Off the beaten road of travel, the ancient town of Nazareth lies secluded on the slopes of Galilee. It has changed but little since he, who is called the Nazarene, dwelt here in his childhood. Mary's well, one of the most popular shrines of Palestine, is now guarded by British soldiers, for it is the only spring in Nazareth. The young women of the village still draw the water and transport it in the fashion of 2,000 years ago. The slender tower of a Muslim minaret testifies to the faith of Islam in the land of three great religions. Not far off, at Cana, the well is still in use where the first miracle was performed. Before us now lies the Sea of Galilee, below sea level according to a signpost in English, Hebrew, and Arabic. Of the ten ancient cities that once flourished on the shores of Galilee, only Tiberias remains, famous in Roman days for its ornate baths. Though modern stores on bustling streets give the appearance of an up-to-date city, here too may be seen camels and donkeys leisurely wending their way along an ancient Roman road. Fishing has always played an important part in the life of the people here. Four of the first disciples were Galilean fishermen and practically the same method of boat and net is employed as in those distant days. Pounding on the boat, according to the natives, frightens the fish into the nets. Patiently they wait, and then the nets are drawn in for the big catch. Skillful hands pull in the heavy load. Oh well, better luck next time. The evening casts a peaceful beauty over the sacred waters. At Capernaum stand the ruins of an ancient synagogue where the master preached to the multitude. And now we journey southward across the plains of Esdralon, the greatest plain in Palestine, separating the mountain ranges of Galilee from those of Samaria. The River Jordan, so often mentioned in the Bible, is the principal river of Palestine. A Muslim native operates a flat bottom boat so that visitors may ride upon the very waters of this river of hallowed memory. Swiftly the boat approaches an overhanging tree, the traditional place of the first baptism. Farther up, the Jordan is crossed by a bridge built in 1918 by General Allenby, commander of the British forces in Palestine during the World War. Travelers from Transjordania are stopped here by customs officials for examination. The luggage of these striking visitors from across the river is thoroughly inspected. And like all customs officials, they are not over careful of the contents. And the little fellow is frightened stiff. Though buses are considerably in use, Trains of heavily laden donkeys are still a common sight everywhere in the Holy Land. And now, off in the distance lies Jericho, that ancient city captured by Joshua after the children of Israel, blowing their trumpets, had marched seven times around its great wall. Little remains of this ancient city of palms, once the richest in all the land. Recent excavations have uncovered parts of the stone wall and jar handles have been found with Aramaic letters. The barren hills of Judea testify that the Dead Sea is not far distant and the signpost in three languages points the way as well as to Jerusalem. Across the burning sands of the desert of Judea we enter one of the hottest regions on earth. The Dead Sea, nearly 1,300 feet below sea level, is the lowest spot on the face of the globe. 
Its waters, saturated with minerals, are extremely bitter and according to recent discoveries, are beneficial in curing certain diseases. It is so concentrated by evaporation that the human body easily floats on the surface. We leave the Dead Sea and continue on across the desert, penetrating a purple haze that covers it, as if to hide some secret of the ages. On the road to Bethlehem, we encounter a group of Bedouin women Occasionally, one of them becomes tired and rides her favorite mount. These Bedouins roam from place to place with all their worldly possessions on the backs of little donkeys that are very adept at the trick of wiggling their ears. A hard life indeed, along a hot, dusty road. The desert region becomes more mountainous, resembling America's great southwest and we discover a duplicate of the Grand Canyon of Arizona in southern Palestine. Approaching Bethlehem, the atmosphere becomes clearer, the horizon brighter, the foliage more luxuriant, those springs of water are strangely lacking. Shepherds and their flocks are always associated with the story of Bethlehem, and today we still find many sheep grazing on the fertile slopes. Like David, the sweet singer of psalms who dwelt in Bethlehem, a native shepherd recounts the tales of old. Within the city stands one of the great pilgrim shrines of Palestine, the Church of the Nativity, oldest Christian church in the world. The narrow entrance prevents desert horsemen from riding into the hallowed interior. Through the flickering light of lamps and candles, we make a simple and sincere approach to the grotto of the Nativity. On the road to Jerusalem, we pass the great tomb of Rachel, wife of the patriarch Jacob, and mother of Joseph and Benjamin. And there, across the valley, lies the holy city, Jerusalem the Golden. The old city is surrounded by a high winding wall, built by Solomon the Magnificent. Outside the wall, the city is surprisingly modern, for well, here in Jerusalem, of all places, we find a traffic cop busily engaged in directing up-to-date automobiles. Fine stores and modern buildings are being erected that sharply contrast with the ancient city of biblical days. The time-worn streets are lively and colorful, though often hilly, for Jerusalem is situated in the mountains of Judea. The ancient citadel of stone now guarded by British Tommies, was erected at the time of the Crusades upon an important position commanding the city walls. For centuries, it was considered impregnable. On the traditional site of the place of the resurrection stands the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It was originally built by Constantine the Great at the request of his mother Helena, who had discovered a rock tomb nearby which he considered miraculous. Throughout the ages, it has attracted pilgrims from many lands. Within the gates of the old city stands the ancient Wailing Wall, where Orthodox Jews congregate to lament the fall of Israel and play for its restoration. Their cries have gone up on high for centuries, and their tears bear witness to their faith. The Mount of Olives so greatly venerated in biblical days, is crowned by churches that tower to the heavens. And on the holy ground of Jerusalem, our pilgrimage through Palestine comes to an end.